Hey, sweeties. Oh, I've got a good one for you today. It's the smackdown you have been waiting for. The Our Place Always Pan versus the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Possible Pan head-to-head -head battle. I'll tell you how they're similar, how they're different, and we'll figure out which one is right for you. Let's get into it, but first, please, subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and now, let's get into these. Always pan, possible pan. First, let's talk about the similarities. We have aluminum made pots. Both of these pans come with a spatula included, and they both will <laughs> ring. Come with a lid. Both come with a stainless steel strainer. And both have non-stick finishes. And they are both can be used on all types of cooktops. Induction, gas, electric, and ceramic. Now let's talk about how these pans are different. The size is a big difference. The Always Pan has a 2.6 quart capacity, while the Ninja Foodie Possible Pan has a four quart capacity. The Ninja Foodie Possible Pan is high heat safe and oven safe up to 500 degrees. The Our Place Always Pan is not oven safe. Do not use it in the oven and it is recommended that you use medium heat only, not high heat. Both pans come with a spatula included. The Always Pan has a beechwood, pan, beechwood spatula that fits underneath the lid. The lid has a little notch to make room for this beechwood spatula. And with wood utensils, you don't want to put them in the dishwasher because they can tend to dry out and split. The possible pan has this, I don't know what it's made of. I have to look on their website again. I looked all over. I don't know if it's uh, nylon or silicone or what, but it is dishwasher safe. Um, and it nestles here on the top of the lid. And speaking of the lids, the biggest difference between them is that the Always Pan's lid is made out of the same aluminum that the pan is made out of. The Never Stick Possible Pan is, has a glass lid with a stainless steel rim. And speaking of stainless steel, both of these strainer inserts are stainless steel but you can see how the possible pan, the, the strainer rests on sort of this lip of the pan, whereas the strainer of the always pan fits completely inside and has these two little handles that fold down to the side. And with the interior, with the interior of the pans, the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Possible Pan is made out of anodized aluminum and it has a textured non-stick surface, whereas the Always Pan has this smooth non-stick ceramic surface. Let's cook some pasta. We have eight ounces of pasta we're gonna put into the strainer portion of each pan. The eight ounces of pasta fits in a, just about one layer in the possible pan. And in the always pan, it's not quite as much, not quite as large. We'll go ahead and fill those up to cover with water. And we'll take them to the stove and get to cooking. Mm, 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 mm. We've got both of our pans on the stove, our pasta in the strainers, and covered with water. We're gonna bring these to a boil, 
and get to cooking. Our always pan is boiling. I've got that spatula in its little resting place there, but I mean, you can see how it gets a little bit in the way. For me, it's in the way. I'm not nuts about that design, but here we are. Our pasta is boiling in the Ninja Foodie Possible Pan. And the pasta, I mean, it's barely covered with water. It's doing fine now, but I have made pasta in this pot before where I've boiled it in the steamer rack where it's boiled over out of the pot through these little uh, drainage ports. And I mean, the problem is you do have to fill up the pot so high with water to get it to cover the pasta. And once it gets to boiling, it can boil out. So just be aware of that. The pasta that's boiling in our always pan is done. So we're gonna take it out. Be careful, you have to take these handles out. Make sure you use some protective gloves and just pull that out in the strainer. And I'm gonna set that off to the side. The pasta in our Ninja Foodie Possible Pan is done. So we will drain that. And now we're gonna brown some ground beef to go in our pasta. I've got both pans preheating the always pan over medium heat. We got a nice little sizzle going there. And the possible pan over medium high heat. More good sizzle for you. We're gonna let these get a little color. And you see, we just have a little more space in the possible pan to be able to brown that meat. A little more claustrophobic here in the always pan, but it's getting the job done. Let's give it a stir and see what we got. We got a little bit of browning on our meat there. The edges of the pan seems to be getting more color than the center. Let's check on the possible pan. Oops, I gotta get my spatula from over here. Let's take a look. Our Ninja Foodie Possible Pan. While the heat is higher, still not getting too much color, a little bit of color there. A little bit of browning there on the meat. Remember, we can cook at a higher temperature for the Possible Pan. It can go over high heat and not just medium. So we're gonna keep cooking. There we got some good color there. Yeah, so we're definitely getting better browning out of the Ninja Foodie Possible Pan. Oops. Getting better color, better browning from the Ninja Foodie Possible Pan over a medium high heat. And I mean, it's doing okay in the Always Pan. Again, the heat is lower because they recommend that you only cook over medium heat. We're getting a little bit of color, not quite as much as we're getting in the possible pan. Well, our meat is finished browning, and again, I used a pound of ground beef, 80-20 ground chuck, 
in each pan. We did get better browning from the Ninja Foodi possible pan than we did in the always pan. We're gonna add sauce in, and I'm using oops, two cups of store-bought sauce in each pan. Oops, I'm making a mess. There we go. And we'll just stir that in. And let that come back up to a simmer. Let's check on the possible pan. Lovely. I'm going to add some spinach to this as well. We've got about four cups of spinach going into each pan. We'll dump that in the possible pan. And then we have some going in the always pan. Let's put the cover on that so the spinach can steam down. Turn that down. Make sure it's all in the pan. Turn that down to a low simmer. Do you have a little bit more space to work here? Because these have a wider. The possible pan is about 11 and a half inches in diameter, giving us a more surface area on the bottom and more space to work. The always pan is about 10 inches across the top and about nine, about nine inches on the bottom, making it you know a little smaller, a little less room to work. And I'm using store-bought Mazetta marinara sauce, which is my favorite store-bought sauce. Not sponsored. I like it because it's a low sugar, no added sugar sauce. A lot of jarred pasta sauce is way too sweet. So I'm using Mazetta marinara sauce. And then I'm using this um, DiMartino Fusilli. And did I buy it just because of this Dolce & Gabbana packaging? Yes. Yes, I did. Did I see it on the... Kourtney Kardashian wedding Instagram. Yeah, that's why I bought it. But it is good pasta. I do like the texture. Um, and I think you can find, I found this at uh, Whole Foods. I ordered it online and it's just really pretty. All right, let's take a look. Spinach is wilting. We'll stir it in. And I could have drained off. There was a bit of extra fat uh, that came off of that ground beef um, that you can just gonna remove with a spoon. There wasn't that much. Spinach is wilted. Let's check on, let me move this over here. Yeah, it is kind of awkward to use that as a spoon rest. Let's check on the always pan. And again, spinach wilted nicely. Stir that in. I do love a one pan meal. <laughs> so both of these are winning in that effect. One pan, one pound of ground beef, each pan. Eight ounces of pasta in each pan. Two cups of sauce. Now let's add our noodles that we cooked earlier. Let's add those back in. Give it a stir around. That looks good. <laughs> that looks really good. I mean, you could add onions to this while you're um, browning the meat, onions and garlic. That would be fantastic. You could put broccoli in here if you want. Let's come over here and add our pasta to the Ninja Foodi Possible Pan. Stir that around. The Ninja Foodi Possible Pan, while it comes with this sort of plasticky um, 
I don't know, silicon or nylon spatula. It does say that it is metal utensil safe. I'm not gonna use metal utensils in it because why risk scratching it? But they do say that it is metal utensil safe while the always pen is not metal utensil safe. Let's add some cheese. That's about a cup of cheese. We're gonna add to the top. And we can just let that sit on the stove. We'll move this out of the way because it's blocking us from adding cheese to that part. Now, let's move over to the possible pin, add cheese to the top of that. But you know what I really wanna do is put this in the oven, run it under the broiler so that cheese gets browned and bubbly just for a minute or two. The always pan is not oven safe, so it cannot go into the oven, cannot go under the broiler. The possible pan by Ninja is oven safe and broiler safe. So we're gonna put it in there just for a minute or two to get that cheese brown and bubbling and it can go right underneath the broiler. Oven safe to 500 degrees. The possible pan, I guess we'll just put it on low and maybe cover it and try to get that cheese to melt. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Under the broiler for about five minutes and we got some nice brown on the cheese in the Ninja Foodie Possible Pan under the broiler. Our always pan on the stovetop covered. Our cheese got melty, still good, but it's just not that extra step of getting the brown on the cheese that you can do in the oven under the broiler in the Possible Pan. Well, what do you think about that? Same recipe in the Ninja Foodie Possible Pan and in the Our Place Always Pan, pasta, meat sauce, spinach, and cheese. We could have made, oh, I guess twice as much in the Ninja Foodi Possible Pan because it's just that much larger. So if you're feeding a larger family, then you might wanna go with the possible pan. If you like to use your skillet in the oven, then you might wanna go with the possible pan. The always pan has a, a nice non-stick surface. They both do well on the non-stick front and we can show a side-by-side -side of some, you know, frying some eggs and seeing how they stick or don't stick and I'll show you that, but you just can't do quite as much in the always pan as you can do in the possible pan. So that's the, the biggest difference. For me, the winner is the Ninja Foodi Possible Pan, just because you can do more. You know, you can bake in it, you can roast in it, you can put, you know, more food, feed a larger family. Uh, the thing that the Always Pan has going for it is, well, it's pretty. I mean, you've seen it all over Instagram, I'm sure. Uh, you've seen Selena Gomez with it. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a pretty pan, I'm not gonna lie. It looks good in your kitchen, so, I mean, you be the judge of that, which is more important to you. Um, the Possible Pan by Ninja Foodie is more functional. It looks good, but it's not quite as, you know, pretty as the Always Pan. But, I mean, both did a good job. You could just do more in the Ninja Foodie Possible Pan than you can do in the Our Place Always Pan. Let's fry up a couple of eggs just to put the non-stick coating to a test. Now, I've had the Our Place Always pan for a, a while longer than I've had the Ninja Foodi Possible pan. The uh, Always pan here we've had for over a year. And that non-stick coating is not as good as it was when it first started. Yeah, the egg is sticking a little bit. I spritzed each pan with just a little bit of 
uh, vegetable oil uh, to coat the bottom slightly, but that egg in the our place pan, our place always pan, stuck a little bit. The pan here, the possible pan, the Ninja Foodie possible pan, is not sticking much uh, at all. There's no sticking, but this is a much newer pan, so that could be the difference with um, you know why this one is not sticking at all, and we do have some sticking from the always pan. So yeah, after after a while, it does start to lose its non-stick coating. Um, so unfortunately, the always pan is uh, sticking. Our egg is yes, a little little egg stuck to the bottom. It's still you know scraping off pretty easily, but. Uh, not really what you want to see when um, you're cooking in your non-stick pans. So, you know, just keep that in mind. It's not really uh, such a fair test because the Our Place pan has been in use quite a while longer than this Ninja Foodi um, Never Stick Possible pan. about that one sweeties the our place always pan or the ninja foodie never stick possible pan which one do you think is right for you please leave me a comment tell me your thoughts and please subscribe to sweet savant hit that thumbs up that notification bell and y'all have a delicious day